What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some more Classroom of the Elite episodes 9 and 10. Very excited to find out what happens with this survival one week on a deserted island training, more character development, more crazy moments, more class v class action. I am very, very excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. If you are, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in those comments. If you guys are not currently subscribed, make sure you guys subscribe and click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. If you guys want the full uncut, unedited version, check out that Patreon. All that is available in the links down below. I say we hop right on into this. This episode, we're doing 9 and 10. The first one is episode 9. This one is called Man is Condemned to be Free, which could be a little deeper in and of itself of a meaning i need I, I wish i knew what the meaning of that was it seems as if no matter what man does in any scenario like we have this unending desire this burning want to be free so we're condemned to always want that freedom if that makes sense we're it's kind of like what uh ayano koji said last episode i need to give up my freedoms to keep my freedom like it's a little bit of a oxymoron you know i'm very curious i love this show with the quotes Two tens for eight. Okay. One box of matches. Amenities. So they give you like the bare bones, the bare basic. We got Ryuen teamed up with Katsuragi? so he tried and failed to get into the student council which i don't want to pause it real quick a lot of you guys keep commenting like that i don't know that manabu horikita's brother is in class three maybe i've miss said 1a but i've known since episode one that he is in he's the upper year he's clearly older than her he's the leader of the student council i do know that just let you guys know but that is very interesting that katsuragi who is such a domineering force in class a can get into the student council when he when Ayano Koji already got offered a position and declined it. That's so crazy. That's kind of kind of cool. Oh, that's kind of big. Yeah, that's kind of big. But also surviving this week is going to be kind of rough, you know. Pollution as well. I like this. Not just survival, but with bonus additions too. Freedom to choose. I like that. This is where my personal think the issues are gonna be with the class. Like we're gonna have disagreements on what we should do, you know? Wow. I didn't realize it was like that. Yeah. Understandable. If there was one thing we can make a compromise on, it would be a toilet. Okay. I'm I'm honestly down. Like taking a shit and taking a pee is kind of a big thing, you know? There are certain things I will all agree with you. We can't indulge every whim. But for this, going to the bathroom, it might be kind of important, you know? I'll vote for the women on this one. I mean, I just want to take comfortable shits, you know? She is outside of her comfort zone in both aspects. I understand that. Yeah, let's talk about your motivations, Anokoji. Why did you come to this school? And of course, they tell me nothing. What would I expect from this show? Very valid. I feel like I'm playing like Minecraft or Rust or Valheim or another survival game, you know? Valid point. Ooh. Also valid rebuttal. And now that Yano Koji's going, soccer is going. Oh, 
What is this guy? Avatar of Zang, the last airbender? Was he Tarzan just leaping from tree to tree? <laughs> I am truly beautiful. I need as much confidence in myself as this guy, honestly. I was noting his fucking physical physique. It make no sense if you guys know what I'm trying to say. Koenji. I actually don't have his name yet. Yeah, that's the thing I'm talking is confidence. Man's a flying squirrel. Was that a cave? Ooh, a cave might be a good spot. And so who's going to be the official leader for right now? Okay. And they're going to see if they think the... Oh, oh, okay, I like that. Okay, so we really need to be observant, paying attention. Oh, Katsuragi already at the spot. And he is the leader, he has the card. Yeah, he go. I need to write down his name as well. He was the one who was roasting Sudo at the restaurant. I don't like him so far. Seems a little full of himself. Katsuragi coming to investigate his instinctual sense that someone is watching. Oh yeah. I love Sakura. So far, she's my favorite character, I won't lie. <laughs> she reminds me so much of, like, Hinata. I know I said that, but I just love it. As he's screaming very loudly. It is a great-looking spot, though. I love a nice-looking river. I love how animated it is. The fishes, the wildlife, you know? And fresh, flowing water next to a camp spot is vital. And I like this music too. It makes me feel like I'm playing like a Pokemon game. I don't lie. Oh, they still haven't decided yet. Oh, which I firmly agree Horikita should be in this situation that because of her responsibility and her desire for always winning, going the straight route, something like that. But I don't trust it coming from Kushida because we know Kushida's number one person she hates is Horikita. Way to stand up, especially with how uncomfortable she is in this scenario, her to stand up like this. I respect it. I mean, worst case, freshwater rivers should definitely be a thing, but worst case, you just boil it, you know? You guys have a box of matches, right? How can, how can you test that if a water is like a freshwater source or has bacteria in it? Obviously, you can tell if it's fresh or salt water, but... Yeah. Go for it, my guy. This is, uh, I'm trying to remember all the names. This is Yamauchi, right? Yamauchi. Whoa, we got someone injured. Looks like they got socked in the face. Yeah, what's going on here? Whoa, take it easy. Oh, I didn't even recognize her. This is Ibuki, the one who was mad at Ryuan. Nice little fire. These are a bunch of exotic fruit. The only one I recognize on the... Oh, I've never seen a live fig. I'm actually... I would actually like to try a live fig, but I saw what was a star fruit in there. Hey. Shouts out to the experienced boy helping out the squad, getting some limelight. 
So, yep, he didn't think about you and your perspective. Heck yeah. Have a little introspection, think about yourself, you know. Shouts out to Yana Koji for even saying that. Shouts out Ike for thinking that, you know. I like this. Planning a budget for your points in worst case scenario just to make everything like have an actual viable plan B. Yeah, in case something were to happen, you know, worst case, best case kind of thing, you know. This is what happens to anime characters who are from bad situations or from mistrusting people and they move over to trusting people. Yeah, where is Koenji? <laughs> oh, he's not going to be here for roll call. This man swam back to the, to the boat? I agree, but what are we doing, buddy? What's the what's the plan here? <laughs> All right, before we get into episode 10, I do want to let you guys know I do notice the ending, and I thoroughly enjoy this, how the ending, um, how it shows the similar, the same picture of the classroom every time, but it ends on a character that's kind of getting a little notice in, you know, these episodes per se. Like the first episode, Ayano Koji. It makes sense. I've seen one with Saki Yanagi. I've seen one with Sakura, and this most recent one, literally right now, has Ibuki in the ending as well. I love that aspect of the ending. But this episode is episode 10. Every man has in himself the most dangerous traitor of all. That's a scary quote. It's a scary quote. Oh, Ayano Koji flashbacks? It does seem like he was in some sort of lab or experimental facility doing a very extreme mathematic <laughs> equations. Who is talking? And I'm, I mean, I wonder why he's saying that specifically to Ayano Koji. We know Ayano Koji has an issue with having power and never wanting to do anything with it. All right, test on day two. I would really like an answer to what's going on with Koenji, I won't lie. Ooh, okay, Mr. Fisherman. Okay, Mr. Gatherers, Hunter Gatherers, I see you guys out here. Ayano Koji to me is like the Desai of the show. Desai from Bungo Stray Dogs. I would literally pay a thousand dollars just to go in his head for a day, you know, and see what he's thinking. And this is the second time Horikita say it's rare for you to volunteer or actually take proactiveness in doing something, you know. But he's like, and he's doing it, which is it relates to that flashback we just saw, you know. Oh, I was like, this looks a little different from our camp setup. Is this class B's? Okay, Ichinose. I know, you guys got the whole setup. Okay, little grill setup. Okay, Hisoka with the handmade telescope. Chill out. それ自体はルール違反でもないでしょ。ノロ遠慮せず見ればいい。だが覚悟はしておくことだ。一つの戦友スポットを一つのクラスが抑え、暗黙のルールに組み込めば戦争が起きる。Okay, sticks in hand. Isn't violence against another class against the rules though? They got the shrimp, the glizzies, the steaks. They got jet skis. This has to be C. What the hell? Okay, summer vacay. Okay, San Pellegrino, chill out. Damn. Not even. Not even denying it at all. And knowing him, he probably didn't even do it. He probably had Albert do it. I see. Okay, 
technically yes, but I'm not sure if this was worth negating that effect. I like how Yano Koji is actually absorbing though and really being observant when it comes to other strategies, plans, stuff like that. Like he's not the guy who knows it all and he's willing to learn and absorb stuff. I love that. Who is taking Ibuki's stuff? What could that be? Is that her phone? I couldn't. It looks like a handle for something. You know, I'm, who in our class is betraying us? What is going on? Yes, give us some details, please. Let us know. Is that so? Well, she does have what seems to be a debilitating injury. Like she always walks around with a cane. Really? I didn't know that. A reformist and a conservative. Who's the reformist? Katsuragi? Okay. Yeah, someone's a panty thief. Yes. So I do understand. No matter who it was, at the at the end of the day, we got to get to the bottom of this. Okay. I remember back at like school, if uh, someone's phone got stolen. Oh, someone set up EK. He's going to have them in there. Someone set him up. <laughs> I may be one of the rare ones, but I somewhat believe you. Who would set up EK? EK was the one who was being in the limelight for all the all the camping and outdoor knowledge. So does someone not like that? Why would we set up EK? Yeah. At the end of the day, though, it was caught in your bag. So good luck. No, there's no way Yano Koji is getting the rap for this. I... Something tells me that's not going to end well. How is Yana Koji going to get out of this? There's no talking your way out of this. Yusuke is covering for him. Now, was it Yusuke? Who, what, I, this is like some Law and Order type shit. Who was it? It's like some Scooby-Doo. And the man behind the mask was, the panty-stealing pervert was? Okay. Okay. So right now our only lead is EK's bag. Yeah, I'm curious why Yusuke is going so in-depth for this, you know? Okay. 
ending right there i wanted to know who the panty thief was before we ended god damn all right talk about a couple of episodes i think i'm actually liking this whole survival aspect more than i originally thought i would when it comes to the points and how your choices like the whole aspect the whole yeah the aspect of freedom that's involved with this i i know i said this during the episode but it really feels like a survival game like minecraft rust valheim like you load in you can go do that if you want you can go do that if you want the choice is completely up to you but with this there's just a little bit more of a structured criteria for what you should and should not be doing and so i i i'm like wow like you could really have like a super real great strategy like this is a test in which you can close the gap between you and the other schools a lot and i like that a lot so i really like how yano koji is volunteering he's being proactive like horikita says he's thinking we got that little taste of his flashback of his, of his childhood a little bit um i'm curious who the panty thief was we panty thief was we saw them i can't say he or she because there's a part of me we don't even no we didn't even see them we saw someone sneak into um ibuki's bag so i have no idea what's going on there's just like a rampant thief which we the title of this episode was inside himself something like that every man has the greatest traitor traitor or you know what i'm saying like this is getting crazy i'm very curious i have no idea you guys have told me i can't trust anyone from the beginning so i'm like i don't know the only per people i really trust right now there's three uh yano code actually four yano koji uh horikita just because main main boy main girl i trust them wholeheartedly sakura has officially gained my trust over these episodes she still has obviously a chance to lose it no matter what she does but she's officially gained it she officially has dapper trust and pseudo and pseudo has my trust because of how much in trouble he's gotten how honest and belligerent he is like he'll tell you what he thinks this man has no reason to lie he's an idiot he's you know brute force type of guy but i love him so those are the four other than that it could be anyone i love the detectiveness i love how we have no idea i mean maybe you guys know you guys obviously know god damn it if you guys enjoyed please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below don't forget to subscribe click that bell so you guys always know when i post over here on the dapper channel don't forget to uh i almost just said don't forget to subscribe again don't forget to check out that patreon if you guys want the full uncut unedited version of these episodes as well as early access to the other shows i'm doing up to one week um, don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.